Back in 2019, wow, good times, we looked at the bosses in gaming that you could only run from. Whether they were invincible or you were just too weak, all you could do was run away from these fiends as fast as your hero's legs could carry you. <laughs> but it turns out there are plenty more horrible things ready to chase us down and set our heart rate so high, it's like we're actually running. The very thing we play video games to avoid. So lace up your escaping shoes and join us as we look at even more bosses you could only run from. Let's go. Ah! Oh, ah! Oh, I didn't tie them properly. Oh, I should really learn to do that. You know when you turn a light off and then you have to run up the stairs or down a corridor and you only feel mildly safe once you've slammed your bedroom door shut because there might be something running after you? Well welcome to that, the video game. It's called Resident Evil Village. Nowhere is this more true than inside the basement of House Beneviento. This is where you end up after looking for your baby's legs in a jar and twisting bits off a mannequin made to look like your wife Mia. Standard. It's also where you're chased around by a horrible nightmare fetus. Standard? Yes, in a supposedly fun sequence of events in a supposedly fun game, after having solved a number of creepy puzzles that include walking through a secret passageway lined with glassy-eyed dolls, you find yourself being stalked by what is presumably a physical manifestation of Ethan's fear of fatherhood. This thing chases you down relentlessly, your only respite being the few Ethan-sized cupboards you can stuff yourself into as the creature bumbles around the room looking for you. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> Despite your ability to cower in a cabinet, the game forces you into multiple chase sequences with a single escape route, your only other option being turned into a human pacifier. <sighs> Having this creature suddenly block the top of a set of stairs might strike fear into the heart of even the bravest of players, but as you can see when I played it, I handled these situations with great poise. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! There. Whoa! There he is! Sorry, sorry, I meant great noise. But possibly the worst chase is when you fix the lift you came down in to make your escape. Power this baby up and the other baby, or whatever the hell it is, appears right behind you, forcing you to run into the nearby study and kite it around a desk while you wait for the lift to kick into gear. We're used to making stressful dashes to get into elevators, but most of them don't end in a giant nightmare fetus screaming a wet goodbye through the shutter doors. At least I think that's what it's saying. I don't speak giant nightmare fetus. That doesn't look good. Jedi Fallen Order is like if Dark Souls met the dark side. He's a Jedi! That's the opposite of dark side! Shut up. The game features a well-fleshed out combat system and utilises all the fanciest lightsaber moves and uses of the Force, so you'd imagine that the developers would want you to use it for every single boss fight in the game. And you'd be wrong. And warning, because you get to the end of the game and, well, let's just say huge spoilers coming up. Yes, if the intro clip hadn't tipped you off, Darth Vader shows up. And oh no, he's mad. Showing off both his callous heart and incredible strength with the Force, he cuts down the boss you spent ages trying to beat and casually sends your mate Sarah flying into lava. Run! No! You would be wise to surrender. Would I? I mean, I actually think I'd just... Like it? Yeah. Cal? You want, you want to cheese it? Cal doesn't show signs of cheesing it at first, and in attempting to take Vader down, gets caught in a force choke. Force pulling something to hit Vader with doesn't help, and then Vader force pushes Cal out of a door, at which point he is forced to run. 
Is there such a thing as overusing the Force? Because I think I just did it with that last sentence. With an angry Vader right behind him, you have to guide Cal across a walkway that is crumbling around you as you sprint, jump, and wall run across it. So not only do you have the prospect of being force choked to death by Vader if he catches up to you, but you also could fall into lava and be cooked alive, or share the fate of these stormtroopers. When you finally get to the escape elevator, Vader makes it very clear that he's mad you didn't hold the doors for him. <laughs> But it seems he found a fire escape or something, because a few seconds later you reach another door and you suddenly get the urge to run back to the collapsing room filled with lava. <laughs> Knowing you have no way to beat him, you're pretty relieved when an uncooked Sare comes back to save the day. Of course, the other reason you can't fight him is that because if you did somehow beat him, it wouldn't be canonically correct. So the law demands you run, Cal. You coward. Those of you excited about the new Dune film might be interested to know that it's not the only piece of visual media with a big sandworm in it. No, I'm not talking about the original Dune or Star Wars. I'm talking Ori and the Will of the Wisps. And Tremors. But for the purposes of this list, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Yep, much to your surprise, turns out giant sandworms aren't just restricted to planets in sci-fi adventures. When little guardian spirit Ori gets to the wind-torn ruins, they find that it probably wasn't just the winds that ruined this old temple. In here lies the heart of the spirit, one of the wisps Ori is tasked with finding. But there's also something in here that doesn't want that spirit to get out. And that's what you discover when the wisps magically bond together to form the potentially world-saving wisp, the Golden Light, also known as Seer. No, not the one that sang Chandelier. I'm gonna run from the big sandy worm, from the big sandy worm. Yep, there's a big horrible beaky worm thing drilling through the temple, destroying everything in its path in its quest to make you and Seer, no, not that one, it's dinner. It's at this point that you have to show just how well you can pull off all of Ori's special abilities. Fail and you'll get smushed by the big worm as it catches up with you. Smushed by the collapsing ceiling after the big worm overtakes you. Or smushed by the big worm as it doubles back on you. There's a lot of ways to get smushed by a big worm, is what we're saying. This boss fight is a real test of your platforming prowess, throwing you right back to the start of the run if you get caught at any point, meaning it all has to be done perfectly in one go, or Ori is stuck there forever, getting smushed over and over again by an enormous invertebrate. But fortunately, the worm isn't completely unkillable, as once you reach the exit, the thing smashes its beaky bonce into the rocky ceiling, causing it to cave in its own head with a, well, cave in. Phew! I assume this is how the new Dune ends? Yeah? Right? It has been well established that Kirby is an all-powerful creation, being the only Smash Brothers Ultimate character to survive the Great Evaporating. And indeed, look how easily he takes out this woolly dangler fish. Easy peasy. Sadly for Kirby though, that fish has a big brother. Indeed, when swimming around the caves of Deep Dive Deep, Kirby bumps into this yarn version of the real-life nightmare monster fish that somehow is just as terrifying in fabric form. But don't bump into it literally. Kirby can't fight this huge thing, so just has to swim as fast as his legs can propel him. And they ain't big legs. Yup, Kirby is weak source in yarn form, so instead of destroying it while riding on a warp star, you have to avoid obstacles and enemies, all while a great gaping moor is chasing you down. But it doesn't end there. As you swim around in dolphin form, two more anglerfish appear, and they tag team, giving you little respite as you try to get Kirby out of there as fast as his little fins can carry him. Panic inducing, but if that thing can beat Kirby, I want it in Smash. New main, here I come. Sorry, Waluigi, back of the queue.
Once inside, beware of the outsized killer who patrols her domain. Never confront him. He is invincible. Now cut me loose. I'll show you the meaning of sacrifice. Alice Madness Returns is proof that everyone goes through an emo phase. Indeed, this dark take on Lewis Carroll's strange world sees a wonderland fallen into disrepair and an Alice that looks like she's been fired out of a cannon into a hot topic. I've not come back here looking for a fight. Really? That's a pity. One's certainly looking for you. The other residents aren't too sunny either. The Dormouse and the Mad March Hare have been turned into heartless captains of industry and the living teapots are all trying to stab you. Ouch! Is this for always filling you with boiling water? Because I'm not sorry, you need boiling water to make a proper cup of tea. Ellen, I said I was sorry. It was room temperature, you absolute scum! Another Wonderland local hoping to get you with something sharp and pointy is the Executioner, a huge card man with tentacles coming out of him all over, which is apparently an entirely normal sentence in this game. You can't judiciously smash this guy like you can the teapots, as he's invulnerable to Alice's attacks. All you can do is dodge his scythe as he swipes at you, and scurry to safety as soon as a way out appears. The Executioner is stubborn though, kicking off a chase sequence that sees you blindly legging it towards the camera while he runs up behind you, spinning his blade like the world's angriest Nutribullet. Dude, I thought it was off with her head, not off with her head, her limbs, and also turn her into a protein smoothie. You can get away, but not content with giving you one mild panic attack, the Executioner returns multiple times, jumping out again and again to funnel you down terrifying corridors and around arenas, slicing through all his buddies in his quest to get to you. Well, I suppose I can't complain too much if he's doing my job for me? You might be knackered after all that, but you're treated to one last chase down part of a labyrinth that looks like the Hampton Court hedge maze was turned into a pop-up Halloween store. But the way you finally escape? Well, see for yourself. I don't remember that happening in the Disney film, although it has been a while since I've watched it. Did I imagine the caterpillar getting high? I estimate a 99% probability of death if an enemy captures you. There may be a very small opportunity to escape, but exploiting this window will be virtually impossible. The enemy are immune to your current weapons. You lack the unique energy used to defeat the first enemy. Your only option now is to evade capture and find an exit. Your highest priority in an enemy zone should be simply to survive. If you looked up badass in the dictionary, there would just be a picture of Samus Aran. What, your dictionary doesn't have pictures? You need to upgrade. The armoured hero of the Metroid series isn't afraid of anything, whether that be energy-sucking aliens... ...or massive pit-dwelling dragon monster... things? I don't know, whatever Kraid is. But that all changes in Metroid Dread when she comes across Emmys, extraplanetary multiform mobile identifiers on the planet ZDR. See, these robots, built by the Galactic Federation, are invulnerable to Samus's regular weaponry, so she quickly discovers that if she wants to survive, she has to scarper. Leg it, Samus! These robots are relentless and relentlessly terrifying, looking, as they do, like a cross between GLaDOS and a Demogorgon. Samus fortunately has some tricks up her shiny metal sleeves, being able to slide through tight gaps and find routes that the Emmys can't take, forcing them to take the long way round. But if she gets caught and can't break free, well, here's Metroid's first horrible insta-death. Samus! No! Thankfully, Samus can escape these metal monsters by getting out of the special designated zones they patrol, meaning you can breathe a sigh of relief. 
While your first response to seeing an Emmy should always be to run, Samus does acquire a few more powers to deal with them, such as the Phantom Cloak, which unlocks the ability to cower in fear. And eventually, after a lot of running away, should Samus find an Omega Cannon upgrade to her Arm Cannon, she can go and melt their stupid faces. Maybe should have included that in the Alpha build of the Cannon, Galactic Federation. Save us all this running around. Are you real? Real enough. He's coming. You, you've got to go. Why? You don't want to be here when he gets here. Just a minute, I'm getting dressed. Get you out of here. There's no way out. Trust me, I've looked. Stop it, you're, you're too impatient. That's enough. The Bioshock series is full of terrifying half-human, half-robot steampunk hybrids. It's like Thomas the Tank Engine, but with more drill hands. Yeah, I don't see Percy doing that. Gordon, though. One of these creatures that is massively terrifying and massively, well, massive, is the Songbird of Columbia. This monster machine guards Elizabeth in her tower and is somewhat of a celebrity, even having its own nursery rhyme. Songbird, songbird, see him fly, drop the children from the sky. When the young ones misbehave, escorts children to their grave. Never backtalk, never lie, or he'll drop you from the sky. Cool. Chill. Ice cold. Yeah, you really don't want to get on this beast's bad side. So, of course, you immediately get on its bad side. In your attempt to break Elizabeth out from her tower, this winged monstrosity decides to pop by for a visit, because everyone loves unexpected guests at the last minute. The songbird doesn't like the idea of Elizabeth leaving the tower, though. It's a way out! Ah, this is not going to be good. Despite having lots of guns and a hand that can shoot crows, the songbird is too powerful for you to take on. So instead of a big fight, you're thrown into a high adrenaline, high altitude chase, guiding Booker and Elizabeth down through the tower, all while the songbird rips the building apart trying to get to you. Wait! Ah! Hurry! Hate waiting for the lift? Well, imagine waiting for your elevator to arrive while a giant birdman is eyeing you up and wanting to slice you into ribbons. Stairs. This chase, while scripted, is one of the most intense moments of the game, meaning that while you're making Booker book it, you're probably also making all the same noises as him while the tower nearly crushes you. In the end, the only thing that saves you from the songbird's grasp is falling from a great height into the sea. Why? Because its one weakness is its lack of waterproofing. You know what? I think I know a guy down in Rapture who could help with that. So those were even more of the bosses that you could only run away from. We hope you enjoyed this video because I shattered my knees making it in that bit in the beginning. So unfortunately, that's the only running around I'll be doing for some time until I get these babies on ice. <laughs> but while we're waiting for the tendons to heal, why not? Why don't you, in the comments, let us know some more examples of bosses that you could only run away from? And if you enjoyed this, then why not check out some other videos? They're floating around on screen above my shattered knees. And subscribe. Ah, ah, run! It's coming! It's coming! It's coming! Well, I can't get away, can I? Because of my shattered knees. <laughs>